good for us. Has anybody been there? You know, going to places that we don't belong? Amen. But I want to open up in a word of prayer. I know we pray, but prayer is very important. So this power has, Father, we just come before you, Lord. Father, I lift up, Father God, every man here, Father God, that you would speak to our hearts, Father God, that whatever you have in store for us, Father God, that we would just receive, Lord God. We, I thank you for the opportunity to let me speak here, Father God, that you could use me, Father God, because you use the foolish things of the world, Father, to combine the wise, Lord God, and I thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Well, praise the Lord, amen. Well, uh, for, there's some people I know here, there's some people I grew up with, uh, Pastor Louie, I grew up with him when we were little kids, my friend Victor here, we were in kindergarten together, and uh, it's good to see people you haven't seen in years, and now you see them, and you see them serving God, amen, amen. that's a, like, a per, I'm pretty sure many of you guys, you haven't seen a friend, and then you run into them, and oh, I'm going to this church, I'm serving God, I'm, and even some of them tell you, I'm a pastor, I'm an evangelist, and that's a blessing, amen, and that's a blessing, and this message that I want to share with you is a message that I believe is for men. There, there's only men in here, right? Yes, yes, sir. Is there only men here? Only men. Make sure there's no bull thing, bull daggers in here, right? <laughs> there are no women here. We want men. But this is for men. And the message is entitled, Be Careful How You Kiss Jesus. Amen? Because if we're not careful how we kiss Jesus, we start losing our appetite for him. Amen? And I know that. You know, when we start getting caught up in the things of the world, we start losing our appetite for God. You know, when we start going to church not that much, we start losing our appetite. And we need to keep an appetite in us for God, amen? And like I said, we're, I'm going to uh, turn to Matthew chapter 5. Because you know what? If you lose your appetite, it's not good, it's not healthy. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown and be trampled by under the feet. Amen. So right here is talking us that we need to have salt in us. Amen. How many know that salt prevents decay? <coughs> salt gives you a flavor. I mean, I don't know if you like salt. How many like salt here? How many of us can eat salt? <laughs> right? You know, but if, if, if you're making a steak, you know, you start putting all these ingredients. You, you put your you know, your, your ingredients you like, you know, your salt and all that. And, and it gives it a good flavor. And that's what the Word of God says, that we are the salt of the world. See, because there's a lot of people that are decaying, and we got to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? So we need to be careful. We kiss the Lord Jesus Christ. We kiss Him with a kiss of betrayal. I know and we're going to go with Luke chapter 22, verse 45, 47. And this is... The, the kiss of betrayal in Luke 22 verse 47 it says well he was still speaking a crowd came up to him who was uh, 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 excuse me while he was still speaking a crowd came up and the man who was called Judas one of the twelve was lead, leading them he approached Jesus to kiss him but Jesus asked him Judas are you betraying the son of man with a kiss in the Living Bible, it says that Judas walked over to Jesus to kiss him in the cheek and friendly gesture. Amen. So we know the story about Judas that he betrays the Lord. And every time we do something wrong, we betray the Lord. If we're somewhere who we shouldn't be, we betray the Lord. Because let me know that we represent the Lord Jesus Christ. Me and you are representatives of the Lord Jesus Christ. But right here it says that, that Judas decided to betray the Lord. Amen? He betrayed the Son of Man with a kiss. Let me ask you a question. Why are you following Jesus? Why is the purpose that you're following Jesus? You know, there's many people that follow Jesus for different reasons. Some people follow Jesus just for the benefits, but they don't want to do the sacrifices. They don't want to labor. They don't want to tithe. They don't want to be in service, but they want all the benefits. And how I many of you know that, you know, Judas was uh, following Christ for the wrong motive. So my question to you and to me is, why are we following Jesus? In Mark chapter 8, verse 27, it says, Jesus and his disciples went to the village. <clears throat> On the way, he asked, who do the people say I am? 
They reply, some say John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and still others say one of the prophets. He says, but what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? And Peter answered, you are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. Who is he in your life? Who is he to you? And like I said, if we're not careful, we know that it's a famous uh, scripture about how Judas betrayed the Lord with a kiss. I mean, a kiss is something that you, that you show affection and love with. Amen? Because let me know that God is love. Amen. And a kiss is something, you know, you kiss your, if you're married, you kiss your wife a certain way. If you're, you have kids, you kiss your kids a certain way. If you have a dog, you kiss. No, I don't know if you <laughs> kiss your dogs. But I know there's pe people that are pretty fatal with their dogs. But a kiss is something, it's, it's something that you show that you care for them. Amen? It's, it's an emotion. And us as men, we, you know, we, we don't show love the way we should. We, we throw the word love around like it is nothing. Amen? I know not no more, but back in, remember back in the days, for those of you that are my age, back in the boulevard, who remembers the boulevard? Huh? Huh? You tell a girl you love her, you don't know her. Hey, I love you, babe. Hey, what's your name anyways? Huh? We throw that word around so lightly, like if it's not important, but you know the word love, because God is love, and God is the creator of love. See, us as men, we must understand what love was. We uh, were not in love. We were in lust before, you know, before Christ. A lot of us, when we were in the world, we, we threw that word around lightly like there was nothing big. But how we know that the word of God says that, that God is love. Amen? amen. And God is love. Amen. Judas called, Judas called him rabbi, which acknowledged Jesus and nothing else more than just a teacher. While the other disciples called him Lord, but here's a man, Judas, that never called him Lord, he always called him rabbi, which just acknowledged him just as a teacher. But he's more than a teacher. Amen. He's the Lord of your life. He's the ruler of your life. Amen. And Judas just used to call him rabbi, while the others call him Lord. Amen. And like I said, a kiss is a way of showing affection. <laughs> See, the biggest obstacle in our lives is the two-letter word, if. I'll serve God if. I'll start tithing if. I'll start getting involved in ministry if. I'll start going to church if. And that's an obstacle in our way. That word if shouldn't be on the way. Say, Lord, whatever your will is for my life, I'm willing to do it. Whatever, you know, back in the, you know, everybody here, you know, we, we, we've been around, you know. Some of us been in jail, prison, uh, places like that. And, and you know what, when we were in the world, a lot of us weren't aware, and I always hear this, and you probably hear this too. When uh, you always hear people about the things they used to do. Well, I used to gangbang, I, I beat up 12 guys at one time. You know, they shot me and the bullets ricocheted off me. And, and we say, we're, we try to act like Superman. This, you know, this big shot collar. But when it comes to the Lord, when we come to Christ, we start acting like little. Can I use the word Shabala, Pastor? <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, or we PC up in Christianity. Oh, but yet, we're in the world, we're so radical, we're so crazy, supposedly. But yeah, when it comes to the things of the Lord, we don't even want to walk uh, to, into a building with a track, but the Muslims go, go into a building with a plane. Híjole. There's something wrong here. You don't see churches like before. I remember when I was in the boulevard and I was used to be guys with their bullhorns talking about Jesus Christ. Who remembers those days? When you would be in the boulevard trying to pick up, trying to score, and here comes the Christians. Oh man, here they come. And you know what? But they were out there preaching the gospel, spreading the good news. But where are they at now? We don't see churches like before out there, right? I know, so, uh, you know, there's churches that go out there, but not like before. You know, you see us, other people. You see the Jehovah's Witnesses? They even have a portable uh, library now. Have you seen them? They're out there in the morning, six in the morning right there at and when chose while you're getting your coffee, that's commitment. But us as Christians, we need to spread the truth. Because let me know that truth will set you free. Amen. You know, the truth will set you free. And we need to spread the gospel, the gospel of the living God. Because God is love. In John chapter, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Whoever does not 
Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Amen? If you want to know love, then you need to know God. We need to know God in a personal relationship. And these are things that I was looking at, things that I struggle with, things that as men we struggle with. And we kiss him with a kiss of disobedience. Mm. We kiss the Lord with a kiss of disobedience. How I many of you have been disobedient to God? Amen. You know, at one time or another, you know, we've been disobedient. But in Jonah chapter 1, in Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 it says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Go to the city of Lebanon and preach against it, because its wickedness has come upon me, before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed towards Tarshish. He went down where he found a ship bound towards that port, and he, and he paid his fare, and he uh, boarded and sailed towards Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Amen. Now this man, Jonah, I could really say that he was really, really called by God. You know, it's one thing to be called by your wife. It's one thing to be called by a friend. But it's another thing to be called by God. Amen. And the word of God says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah. The word of the Lord came. God was speaking directly to Jonah and giving him some, some things to do. But Jonah was disobedient. And we kiss the Lord Jesus Christ with a kiss of disobedience sometimes. I mean, I know not everybody all the time wants to get up Sunday morning for church. I mean, we struggle sometimes, right? I'm tired or whatever. You know, because we maybe had went to a little party, a little gathering on Saturday, and we come to service dragging our feet, giving God the leftovers, right? We're all, you know, we're, 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 we should be in the house of God, getting excited for the things of the Lord. But we're so exhausted from the, the things that we did the day before. But we should get excited for the things of God. Amen. And that's for the things yeah. of the world. Yeah. We get excited. Now we're, I mean, I don't know who's a Ram fan here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Two people. All right, we'll pray for you guys. <laughs> you know what? There's a lot of people that are excited. My brother knows excited, man, because the Rams are back in L.A. And you know what? I didn't have a, I didn't have a team. A uh, football team, and you know why? The very simple reason is because there was no LA team. Mm. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cowboy fan. Oh, well, move to Dallas now. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what I'm But you know what? I didn't have a team for the reason that there was no LA team. But now you're probably saying, "Well, now you're jumping on the bandwagon, right?" I'm gonna support the Rams because they're from okay. LA. But I'm not gonna get a Ram jersey and, and tattoo my my some Ram horns on the side of my head and all that. But I'm gonna support them. And you know what? When you go to church and you find a good church, you need to support that church. Right. You need to support your shepherds. You know, for those of you that know, I, I was at a, at a church for about over 20 years. And maybe about three months ago, I, I started coming here and I decided to stay here. And I decided to stay here because, you know what? I want to be in a place where I know it's led by God, not by man. Because even though there's a lot of churches that are led by man, not by God. I want to be where uh, the church is led by the Spirit of God and where God speaks to the shepherds of this church so they can give us some good food, amen? But we, we kiss them with a kiss of disobedience. See, because Jonah did not hearken to the word of the Lord. Amen? Jonah didn't hearken to the word of the Lord. From the beginning of creation, it's been a problem. You see, Adam didn't hearken to the word of the Lord. He hearkened to the word of his wife. You know? Remember the story about Adam? Adam didn't hearken to the word of the Lord. He hearkened to the word of his wife. From the beginning of creation, people have been disobedient to God. And in Jonah chapter 2, verse 10, it says, And the, and the Lord, we know the, the story of how, how he was disobedient, he was heading towards a plate, and then they're throwing them overboard, and, and God created a great fish. You know, even in his disobedience, God did not allow Jonah to drown. I know, in our disobedience, God would not allow us to drown. Let me know that. He's our lifesaver. You know what? Jesus, in my car, doesn't say shotgun. He drives. You know, oh, Jesus uh, uh, sitting shotgun. No, you should, you should allow him to drive. Because when you're allowing God to direct you, you're hitting the right to the right place, and we need to follow God. You know, it's one thing to say I believe in God, because even the devil believes in you. 
But it's another thing to say, I follow Christ. And how do you follow Christ? Well, you don't follow him. You don't walk with him side by side. Because when you're walking side by side with the Lord, you're saying, I'm equal to him. When you're walking in front of him, you're saying, I'm greater than him. But when you're walking behind him, you're following him and he's leading you to the right direction, the right path. The decisions that you have to make in your life always put Christ in them. Amen? We need to do that. So, so if, if Jonah wanted to hearken to the word of the Lord, he would not went through the situation. But we know that that you know he got swallowed by a great fish, and this this is what we need. Sometimes we need to be, get swallowed by a great fish, so we could have a long time with God. How many of us, when we're in a situation, we start crying out to God, "Oh Lord, if, if you bail me out, or oh, Lord, if, if you do this, I." I, I'll, I'll go to church. I pro we promise things that we don't even keep. And then after that, when we get out of the situation, what God? We forget about him. So Jonah fled. Verse uh, 10 of ch uh, chapter 2 says, And the word of the Lord commanded the fish to vomit Jonah into dry land. See, dry land represented to jo Jonah a second chance. You know, the Bible says that God commanded the fish to vomit him out into dry land. That's God. Only God can do something like that. God commanded the fish to swallow him, and now he's commanding him to vomit him out. And now he's on dry land, and it represents a second chance. And it says, And they know the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, going to the great city of Nineveh, and I proclaim this message I give to you. And Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Now, here's Jonah. Let me know that we serve a God of second chances. Yeah. More than the second chance. How many of us here should be dead or in prison? Amen. I mean, a lot of us shouldn't even be alive right now because of the grace of God. Because of His grace and His mercy, no matter how many times we slap them in the face, no matter how many times we kiss them with a kiss of betrayal, He has always been there for us. Amen? Amen. And we also kiss Jesus with a kiss of, of doubt. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's all good when somebody's going through something, we're encouraging them, right? Come on, brother. This is the kind of guy I was when I really got saved. If a brother will go through something, I would start. You know, I wasn't real humble. Like, come on, brother, shake it off. Quit swinging your purse and, you know, all these things. Come on, you know, blah, blah. But, you know, I had to learn how to be more, you know, gentle, more humble. But you know what? The kiss of doubt. In Luke chapter 7, verse 19. Luke chapter 7, verse 19. The kiss of doubt. We could have all the faith for other people, but when it comes to us, do we have that faith? It's all right to tell somebody, oh, come on, God will provide for you. But when our bills are here, we're buying our nails, right? Quick and loan and car title loan and all these <laughs> things. Huh? You, 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 you know, you, somebody dropped their wallet. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, <laughs> you think, right? Amen. You know, but like I said, in, Matt, in Luke chapter 7, verse 19, it says, He sent them to the Lord to ask him, are you the one who is to come, or should we accept someone else? In the New Living Translation, it says, And he sent them to the Lord, asking them, Are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? Here's a man, John the Baptist, right? That, you know, he baptized Jesus. He's seen the miracles, but yet now he's in prison, and now he's in the dungeon of doubt. It's just like us. When we go through things, we start doubting God. Amen. And this is a place where John the Baptist is and he says, man, maybe it's not him. So he sends his, his, some of his disciples to go and ask Jesus. And Jesus says, go and tell John that miracles are, are happening. Eyes are, blind eyes are being opened in God and that things are happening. But see, John the Baptist was in the dungeon of doubt. And we kiss Jesus with the, the kiss of doubt. Like I said, it's very simple and very easy to encourage others. But what about when it's you? You're in that situation. You're in that obstacle. You're in, 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 in something that, that you're going through, but now you start doubting. But yet you're just telling other people, come on, don't doubt. 
Come on, trust in the Lord, have faith. You know, it's easy. It's easy when everything's going good. I mean, know this. It's, oh, you're all oh, praising God and speaking in tongues and doing the shuffle and the cartwheels and everything when everything's going good. Oh, man, but when things start happening, what happens? We get quiet. We don't want to lift up our hands. We don't want to worship God the way we should because things are not going the way they should. So the kiss of doubt. And we kiss them with the kiss of doubt. And we also kiss them with the kiss of misrepresenting. I know that we, we, us here, are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And we misrepresent the Lord more, worse than we should represent Him. We represent the Lord. And we're ambassadors. Of, you know, to be an ambassador of a country is one thing. To, but to be an ambassador of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that's something awesome. And that's what we are. Amen. We're ambassadors. You represent the Lord Jesus Christ. And how are you representing Him is a thing. It's easy to represent the, the Lord here. But what about when you're outside, out of these four walls? What about when you're at home? What about when you're in your internet, your computer? Are we representing Christ the way we should? Or, you know, because people are, let me know that people are looking at us. Amen. And you know who, who's, who's uh, your, the ones that will put you in check the most is unsafe people. Yeah. You know, those are the ones that will put you in check the most is unsafe people. You're doing something and, hey, I thought you were a Christian. Hey, you're not supposed to do that. Anybody ever went through that? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> what? Jesus made wine. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Jesus made wine. And he made coke for these too. But, see, we misrepresent the Lord because we're not in, in tune with the Spirit. We're not lined up with the Spirit. See, if your message is not filled with hope, you might be misrepresenting God. If you think that being real means talking more about the wind and waves in your life and about the one who comes, the, instead of the one who comes the storm, maybe you are misrepresenting Christ. If you think that people who do not attend a Sunday morning meeting are out of God's covering and protection, maybe you're misrepresenting, misrepresenting God. We misrepresent God in different ways. We misrepresent Him in, 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 in ways that are not pleasing to Him. And that's what happens is when you start kissing Him with betrayal and, and you start getting stagnant, you're getting on to it. You know, you know, when you're pretty saved and any, you know, you pretty get saved and, you know, you had a filthy mop and you cuss and you say, oh, I'm sorry. You know, you feel bad. You do anything bad. You argue with your spouse. You feel bad. But after you start doing the same old routine, then you get numb to it. You know, it, it's, there's no more conviction. See, there's a, there's a difference between conviction and feeling guilty. Guilt from the world, conviction from the Holy Spirit. Come on. You know, I used to feel... Guilty after I did the act I shouldn't be doing. You know, after I did something I shouldn't have been doing. After I was high, like, oh, man, thank gosh, I shouldn't have did that. But why wouldn't I feel guilty before? Why do people get convicted after they do the sin instead of being convicted before we do the sin? I'll tell you why. Because of this, our flesh, it's our human nature. Amen. It's quiet here. I'm sorry. If I didn't give you a bless me servant. Oh, no, okay, you know, it. if you want a car, you gotta go to Oprah. <laughs> um, <laughs> in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says, We are therefore God's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal to us. We implore, implore you, I can say the word implore. Oh. Yeah, thank you. You on Christ we have be reconciled to God. So right here in Corinthians tells us that we are ambassadors, like I said. Yeah. You know there's people that we know when you get locked up you get a public defender, <laughs> right? Because we can't afford a real lawyer. <laughs> right? So they you know and, and uh, they're supposed to represent you. 
you know, and a lot of times, you know, everybody's innocent in jail, okay? Everybody. Man. But you know what? We serve somebody that we represent that's the creator of everything. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we represent Him. That's an honor and a blessing to represent Him. You see, you don't represent Him with your clothes. You know, you don't represent Him with a Christian T-shirt. One time I was uh, in the store, and this this guy had a when I was a girl, had a teacher that said Jesus is Lord or Jesus is coming. She had a top back in her hand. I said, Wow. I felt like telling her, but I couldn't because she was like, girl, take that shirt off, man. <laughs> you know, you're representing my God in a bad way, you know? <laughs> Let me ask a question. If you were dust for fingerprints, your fingerprints, would they find them more? Would they find your fingerprints in the house of God all over, in the, in the door, not everywhere? Or would they dust for fingerprints in the connection? Would they find more of your fingerprints there? Huh? Or at the... At the Bar. <laughs> well, they dust her fingerprints. Matter of fact, if they were to dust one of those girls that are dancing, well, your fingerprints be all over her, huh? Your finger, if you're wearing your fingerprints, you're only be on your wife. Amen. And you check them, and there's some other fingerprints on there. You better put her in check. Come on. Huh? I just scream. <laughs> no, I'm not. No. And then another kiss we kiss them is with a kiss of. Being at the wrong place. Has anybody ever been at the wrong place at the wrong time? Huh? Oh, so many of us. Huh? And that's the kind of kids we kiss them sometimes of being at the wrong place at the wrong time. And I'm going to talk about David and Bathsheba. It says, in the spring at, at the time where kings went up to war, David stood behind. You know? So right here it's saying that when kings go up to war, that's David sent his, his army to go, but one evening, in verse uh, 13, one evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. So what caught his attention? Number one, he, he, it wasn't roof time yet. He wasn't supposed to be in the roof. You, you know, uh, kings used to go out to battle with their men. You know, back then kings would go up to war and battle with their men, but uh, David decided to stay back and he's at the rooftop and the word of God says that he looked down, he seen a woman bathing and the woman was very beautiful. Bible says she was very beautiful. So that's what caught his attention. Here's a king. And we know the story about how he asked who she was and they came with a report. It, it's, uh, it's Bathsheba. Her the Hittite's wife, and blah, 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 and this and that. And, but you know what he did? He didn't say, oh, no, you know. He says, come bring her to me. He's still, one of his men is fighting war, and he's trying to pick up on his wife. Here's a man, David, that's after God's own heart. Creating me a clean heart. But yet, he asks us about her and they tell him, okay, she's married. I'll just put it in a la brava translation. She's already hooked up, David. <laughs> but he didn't care. It was bring her to me. And we know the story. He ended up sleeping with her. He ended up getting her, getting her husband killed. And then the prophet Nathan comes and tells him the story. And what happened is there was a price to pay. There was a price to pay. And we're at the wrong place at the wrong time. There's a price that we have to pay. We need to realize that we shouldn't be in places. You know, I know a lot of people, and you know, and you know, I'm pretty sure so much sincere, but I know some people that said they're gonna go to the connection or tell them about the Lord. And you know, I okay, I I, I give that up, you know. But I'll tell you, man, you better make sure you're prayed up before you go into that connection's house. Because guess what? What, when you think you're going to give them the gospel and, and send, get, bring them to repentance, that guy's going to hand you a little baggie and you're going to fall for it. And that's what happens when you're not lined up with the Spirit, when you're relying on your own strength. 
I thought like that before. You know, one time when I got saved uh, 30 years ago and, and my wife wasn't serving God, it was always like that. She was, I wasn't. And one day I told her, you know what? You don't want to go to church? I'm going to go backslide for a week. I told the Lord I'm going to backslide for a week. It turned out to be 20 years of backsliding. I was at the wrong place at the wrong time a lot of times. And even as we come to church, after service, we go to places we shouldn't be. I'm not, not this church, the other church on the street, okay? Not these men here, but the other men down the street. We go to places where we don't have no business at, right? We go to places where we don't have no business at. You know what? Before I used to not want to go to family functions because they're not safe. They used to drink and start cussing and all that. I didn't want to be around it. But my wife said, you know what? You, we, we need to be there and just be alive. Yeah. We just need to be alive. Because they know me and my wife. They know I was a big alcoholic. I used to drink that white horse, that Thunderbird, all that, you know, that ghetto juice. <laughs> if I didn't have my fix, I needed something. But now I'm serving God, me and my wife. And now when we go to parties, uh, people are drinking in front of us, oh, sorry. Or when they cuss, they go, oh, sorry. You know what I tell them? I'm not Jesus. That's right. I'm not Jesus. You don't have to apologize. I know they do it out of respect, okay? But sometimes being at the wrong place at the wrong time will get you in trouble. Just like David. Can you picture this? He's on the roof. You know, that's another, that's another problem us men have struggle with. Lust. No, no, nobody struggles here. Nobody has a room in that kind of. You see a, a beautiful girl walking by. You know, you know, it's funny. I'm going to say this before I say this. You know when uh, my daughters, I have daughters, you know, and I have nothing but girls, so pray for me. I have four <laughs> girls. And my daughters, when they're looking at a, a, a TV program and all that, they say, oh, she has a cute shape. Right? You know, when you know, there's a girl on TV, they, they say, oh, look, she has a little cute shape. What else man say? Say, you. Huh. We say, damn! Right? We don't say she has a key shape. We have a problem with this. We have a problem with this, and this is a problem that's that been since the beginning of time. I'm not saying that we're constantly, you know, throwing a U turn following or going to Walmart, acting like we're looking for something on. How come you're laughing? Huh? We, we follow it. We follow those things that are not good for us. Being at the wrong place at the wrong time could get us in trouble, amen? Right. And here's another one that we like to do. It's the kiss of judging. Mm. Mm. Come on. Huh? Come on. I know nobody judges here. The kiss of judging. See, if we want to change the world, it starts with us. We must change our we try to change our kids. We try to change our spouses. We try to change the world. But change starts with us. Amen. We look at somebody. You know, somebody leaves from the church right away. They get labeled as a rebel. Oh, he left. I'm, when you're in church, you're a man of God. You're a blessing. But when you leave the church, I knew he wasn't right. He's a rebel. I knew it all the time. But when you're in church, oh, you're a blessing to them. Does that make sense? <laughs> Judging right away. Oh, he's probably, you know, I don't know what people are thinking of, about me at the church I used to go to, but can I be honest with you, Pastor Mata? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care because you know what? I have to be accountable to him. Yeah. Accountable to your pastors, of course. But most of all, accountable to him because he sees everything. Yeah. Pastors don't see everything you do, <laughs> but he does. Amen. You might think of getting over it, but you know what? God does expose whatever is in darkness it gets exposed to the light. Yes. Right? Yes. We want to change. You know, your you know your ID is who you are. But me, like me, I used to weigh 300 pounds. I'm 179, and I'm not doing this losing weight on purpose. It's, I'm sick. But you know, your ID tells you your height, your color of your hair, your color of your eyes your weight, and all that. That's who your identity, the identity, that's who you are. That's who you are. And there's people that are trying to uh, change their identity. Contact me, I got brown eyes, I want green eyes, okay. I have blonde hair, no, I want red hair, right? Like this and that. They try to change their identity. This is, this is a little story about uh, a woman that got a heart attack. 
And the woman got a heart attack. She went to heaven. She says, Lord, I don't want to die, you know. And the Lord goes, I'm going to give you more. You know, okay, I'm going to let you go back down to earth and let you live longer for, for, you know, 20 more years. And so she got excited. So what she did, she went and got all this plastic surgery. You know, got everything done. So one day she's crossing the street and she got run over and she died. And when she went to heaven, she said, Lord, you see, we're going to give you 20 years more. And the Lord, she said, I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you. Will God recognize you? Huh? And there's people that are trying to change their appearance, trying to be not something they're not. You know, guys my age, I'm 57, they're trying to act like youngsters, still gang banging. You, you know people like that? Man, what's wrong with these guys? They're grandparents and they're still like, uh, uh, you know, doing all this little... Uh, gang stuff, you know? You know, gangs are not like before. Cholos are not like before. When I was a young guy, I used to respect veteranos, you know, right. guys like our age. Youngsters, you know, when I had a church in Santa Fe Springs, one time a guy hit up by those nietos. I was, and I was passing out flyers. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, hey, that's him. I go, what? He goes, who are you from? I go, I'm with you. Stand on a pastor right here. He goes, you know where you're at? I go, yeah, where are you? He goes, no, you're those nietos. I says, okay, but you know what? There's no respect for the elder either. And we judge people by their appearance. You know that thing, don't judge a book by its cover, right? You know, we know that uh, Prince just died, right? They said it was uh, pills. We don't know yet, but be before that, it was a, 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 a man that was real well known in the industry. And it was Michael Jackson, little Michael. Michael Jackson could have not said it better. It's a song that says, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make a, the change, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make that change. <laughs> Michael Jackson's song is, Things that well, I used to sing this song, right? I'm staring at the man in the mirror. I mean, when I read this, I said, "Man, you could have put it any better." If you want to? It, it starts with a man in the mirror. We well, gotta examine ourselves daily and look in the mirror, Amen. and not look in the mirror to start popping your brackets and all that, right? But right. look in the mirror to examine yourself and look, because I know a lot of us do that, right? Let us look at us and. Start looking at her hair while I'm getting a bologna. What is it? Are you bologna or not? <laughs> or things? <laughs> no, I'm just like, come on. We're, we're men. You, you, we're, we're men, right? I mean, it's ready to have a sense of humor, right? Okay, okay. Say, oh, brother, you're behind the pulpit. It is what it is. What you see is what you get. See, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm up there and when I'm here behind the pulpit, I'm the same person. I don't transform and say, Brothers, open up your Bibles too. <laughs> you guys would have left already. <laughs> Pastor Mata and all the other pastors, are, they're having a good time there. And then when they come up here, they're still having a good time. Yeah. It's good to have good things in the Lord, amen? Yeah. But it starts with us. The change starts with us. We've got to make that change if we want to make this world a better place. We're not going to be able to change the whole world by ourselves, but if each and every one contribute, and your neighborhood, wherever you live, you'd be a light in your neighborhood. I mean, I wonder if I were to knock at your neighbor's door and ask you, how are those people, how are those Christians next door to your house? Huh? What would they say? They're always yelling. <laughs> They're always smiling. <laughs> huh? The dog took off with a cat. <laughs> I don't know. They're, I don't know. You know, I, I wonder, or, or maybe I were to go into your car and put on the radio. You know, there's, you know, how many know that there's a difference between secular and worldly music? Worldly music, it's a boom, boom, you know, right? Little Wayne and all that. And there's Christian, you know, how do you know Little Wayne? I got the whole collection. Of no, because you know what? I like to keep up with things that are happening, you know? And the reason I used to I do that, I used to do that more money. Remember, remember when we ran youth ministry, we used to do network together, you know, do things. So I had to pick on the youth brain to see what's going on, you know. But we gotta stop judging and start loving. We need to examine ourselves and take a good look at ourselves. 
In Matthew chapter 7, verse 3, Matthew chapter 7, verse 3 says, Why do you look at the speck in, of sawdust in your brother's eye? In your brother's eye? A speck is something so small, and yet we still, and we see it in our brother's eyes. A speck that's so small, but yet we see it. Why? Because we're looking so good. And the Bible says, when you have a, a log in yours, when you have a big old plank in yours, when you have a telephone pole in yours, but yet we look at the speck that our brother's eye. It says, you hypocrite. Take that long out of rest, you'll be able to see clear, and then you'll be able to, to help your brother instead of judging your brother. Huh? You know, I see a lot of guys that, that, that walk around and they're not serving God and they have tattoos that say, Only God can judge me. Have you ever seen that one? Amen. Only God can judge me. And that's so true. God's our judge. We're not the judge. But we need to take that speck out of our eye. See, in order for you to find that speck, you need a magnifying glass. And a magnifying glass is something that, that make, if you use a magnifying glass, it will enlarge whatever you're looking. Amen. But the Word of God says to magnify the Lord. Amen. To enlarge Him for who He really is. Because to a lot of people, He's a little God. But my God's not little. My God's a big God. Amen. You know, a lot of us here were from different neighborhoods, or maybe we're not from a neighborhood, but not we're all from the same neighborhood. A lot of us here probably couldn't really look at each other in the streets or, or whatever, but now we're serving God, and only God can do that. Exactly. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can put a bunch of knuckleheads together and to be in unity. Wow. See, like I say, we say we're crazy for the, in the things of the world. We claim we were this and that. But yet, when it comes to the things of God, we're so soft. Yeah. See, there was a time when women were beautiful, men were strong. Now women are strong and men are beautiful. Hey, Chorlos don't put their eyebrows. Back in the day, they did it, but not, you know. Uh, you see, they had their eyebrows real nice and thin. Hey, if you look better than your wife, you better check yourself. The guy that was doing that true instead of your wife, then you better check yourself, man. But you know what? Judging, we judge people. We judge the alcoholics because they're drinking. We judge the homosexuals because of the lifestyle. We know we love homosexuals, but we don't love their sin, right? I have, uh, uh, my daughter has friends that are homosexuals, and you know what they tell her? Man, your mom and dad, I love them because they never look down on me or judge me. Man. They Amen. never tell me nothing bad. Thank you, Lord. You know why? Because I want to win them to Christ. Come on, right. Right. I'm not going to start talking about oh, a little chicote and whatever. You know? <laughs> Get right. Or, no. You know, we got to love them. We Amen. can't judge them. They're alcoholic. I was a big alcoholic. I used to hang around right there on, I don't know, right, right there by, in, in, in Mariana, right there on, uh, or that Jack in the Box into the Little Liquor Store used to be thrown right there with my wife, put all drunk and crazy. And I was getting judged. Hey, look at that wino. It is what it is. Yeah, it is. I was a wino. But us as Christians, we're not to judge like that. That's right. See, when you see an alcoholic, you need to see through God's eyes, there's a pastor right there. You need to Amen. see through God's eyes, there's an evangelist Amen. right there. Amen. When you see a hooker or a hood right, you should say, there's a there's a woman of God right there. That's right. You know, when you see that gang member all tatted down, you know, you say, there's a man right there that could reach out to the young people because he's been through it. Yeah. But yet we start judging, and we are not to judge. And like I say, we are to magnify the Lord, to enlarge. And like I said, the only thing we've been in, is in Psalms chapter 32, verse 3, it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. That's Psalms chapter 20, 32, verse 3, it says, To magnify the Lord with us and exalt him together. we got to start paying attention, and we got to start being a little bit more careful how we kiss the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm almost done here. Because like I said, when you start getting in the habit of, I mean, those of you remember, I mean, know that 
Your wife knows when you're giving her a sincere kiss. <laughs> no? I don't mind this at all. Uh, you know, when I give her a kiss, I oh, that wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> I was bummed. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but before we, 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 we got her wise and before we conquered them, man, we would open the door for them, we would kiss them, we would buy them flowers, we will do everything, we will super size it at McDonald's, and all those things, and after a while we started getting comfortable with the spouses, we conquered them, now we don't open the door for them, now we we'll slam the door on them, right? Now we don't buy them flowers like we used to, why? Because that appetite has vanished. Mm. And so it does happen in Christianity. We need to fall in love Amen. back with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We Amen. need to come back to our first love. Yeah. Come on, bro. And when I'm talking about lust, I'm not talking about women only. People lust over the cars, you know? Huh? You know people lust over the cars? Go to Montebello Park, you see I'm lusting over the cars. <laughs> waxing it and waxing it, armor all in and this and that. Hey, 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 no food in the car, kids. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you barely get your car, you, you take care of it, right? When you get in your car, you're vacuuming, watering it after a while, forget it, man. French fries in the car, they turn into <laughs> chips, you know, because they've been in there so long. But you know what? You don't lose that appetite for God. I was, in, I was in a season in my life when I got real sick that I started questioning God. God. You know, I started, I started justifying my righteousness, supposedly. God, I'm faithful. God, I do this. God, I go to the hospitals to visit the sick. I go out on my way. And, you know, and I'm, I go, why God? And God says, why not? Who are you? Yeah. Remember the story of, of Job? Yeah. Who are you? Huh? I, I, mean, I don't think none of us has had it as bad as Jonah. I mean, as Job. Yeah. But, you know, when we... When we have our little little incidents, we have our little pity parties, we start sniveling, we start crying. <laughs> we start crying, oh, why God, why God? You know, why this and that? But we need to be careful. Judas kiss the Lord with a kiss in the trail. Man. When I read that the first time I got saved, I go, man, that's, man, how, why, why, why couldn't you just go, hey, shh, this stay right here, or the one that's holding the, the brown penalty. You know, how come you could say this is gonna be the guy or the one I shake his hand? No, I had to be with a kiss. You know, a, a, you know, a kiss in the cheek. That's a, a way of showing affection and love. But yet he never acknowledged Jesus as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He just acknowledged him as a teacher. To me, he's more than a teacher. He's my savior. I tell my wife, I gotta tell you something. There's somebody I love more than I love. You. She goes, oh, you really? Yeah. Her name is Jesus. She goes, you better love him more than you love him. And we need to love him with all our heart, my soul, and strength. Amen. Let's bow our heads real quick. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> you know what this message, I don't, I don't know if, 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 it, if you received from it, but I, I, just, I just feel that us as men, we start getting comfortable, we start getting lazy, we we, we, we start getting sloppy, if I could say that. We start getting sloppy in our Christianity. It's no longer that excitement, that zeal that we once had when we first came to Christ. Just think about when you really came to Christ, how you were so excited. You're passing the name to call an hour. You just wanted flyers just to go on your own. Huh? You couldn't wait for service. You couldn't wait for the men's fellowship. You couldn't wait for the events to come. You were excited. And... After a while, like I said, we lose focus. That's what we're supposed to set our eyes on Jesus. That's what we're supposed to walk behind him because he's going to lead us to the right place. And right now, what I want to do is I want to just pray. A general prayer where you don't have to, you know, get up or anything. You want to stand up, you can stand up. But I just want to say a prayer for all of us men, all of us, including myself. Because you know what? The world is not getting any better. <coughs> And we are part of the answer in your neighborhood, in the street you live. You know, God put this church here. God literally put New Jerusalem right here for a reason. And that is to win souls around here. Wherever church you go to or wherever is at, God placed that church 
in that city for a purpose, and that is to win souls. And maybe you said, you know what, I, I, I want to get back on track. I want to yeah, get that appetite for God. That's a good thing. You know, that's a good thing to have an appetite for God. But do you really have an appetite for him? Do you really crave for him and really, really ask yourself, do you really desire him? But I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to pray. And if you want to repeat this prayer, just repeat it after me. It's, it's just a prayer of just acknowledging him. And, you know, even, I'm not saying we're in sin or you're in sin, but we need to rededicate our lives to God every day, man. Because every day we fall. So if you want to repeat this, go ahead. Say, Father, I come before you asking you to forgive me of my shortcomings and my attitude. I want to be a good example to my family, my friends, my neighborhood, and my city. Lord, teach me and guide me in my journey. I do not want to kiss you with betrayal. I do not want to kiss you with disobedience. I don't want, I don't want to kiss you with judging others. But I want to kiss you and you could embrace me in your loving arms. I thank you, Lord, for accepting me and for loving me. And I give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap.